The movie begins by showing a magnificent futuristic city. Shortly after, we see an unusual kind of decay taking over the buildings. The scene changes to a room that holds the architectural city design. A man sleeps in a bed next to it. When he wakes up, he walks over to a picture and looks at it. In the picture, he stands with another person, but that person seems to be decaying from the picture. The man then opens the refrigerator, and the food there undergoes that unusual decay too. He looks down at the floor, which appears to be recovering from decay, and then the ceiling too. Confused and scared as to what is happening, the man leaves the room and stands in the external interior of the building. He sees another person there, but the person is taken over by the decay. This scares him enough to make him exit the entire building. He looks into the city, and it is wholly distorted. As he walks the streets, he sees decay, and complete people walk about as if everything were normal. The man stands somewhere and sees several iconic buildings from around the world floating, decayed, turned sideways or upside down, not connected to any pavement or ground. They are just there as if it were some abstract painting. Then he leaves that area and comes to look at a building. The decay on it starts to disappear. It starts composing to its original form instead. The man then looks at the roof of another building and sees that something is forming there. That thing then jumps off and starts moving towards him. When it approaches, we see that it is some kind of stone creature. It is about to attack him, but then gets shot at. The shot knocks the man to the ground too with its strong force. After that, several people who are not decayed come to his aid. They pick him up and tell him to follow them. They are all running from that stone creature. Very quickly they reach what looks like a dead end. The road just ends in the air, but one of the man's saviors pushes him, making him glide into the closest section of floating land. He settles onto it when he gets there. The rest of the team then follows him. They continue running as the creature chases them. They move across weird structures and maneuver themselves around decayed people. When they come to a point where they all have to jump up to get to the next section of land, the man they saved has a hard time doing it. Eventually, he jumps, but he does not jump well enough for the gravity of the new section to take him. So he lands on the edge of the building with his stomach, hanging on with his arms. The lady helps him get up. They're on the roof of a building, the creature approaches them. One of the men shoots it, causing it to fall to the side of the building, but it hangs on. When they reach another area, the creature jumps down quite a distance from them. They hide from it behind a pillar. One of them then takes out a bomb and blows the creature up along with himself. The three of them keep moving along after that. While they move, the man they saved, Victor, asks them who they are and where they're going, but they do not answer him there. They all keep walking, with the surrounding area continuing to appear bizarre. Victor asks the lady, whose name is Fly, what happened. She tells him that he is in a coma. All the people who are here, who look and act like real people, are in a coma. She further tells him that all that they see here is what they collectively remember. It is like a giant warped memory. She says that the people are not real, but just memories. Victor then asks again where they are going, and Fly points to an upside-down factory floating a respectable distance away from them in the sky. The three of them then get on a bus. While they walk inside, they see a lot of people suddenly occupying the outside of it that were not there before. Fly tells Victor that it is like a wormhole. Someone remembered the bus near the factory, while someone remembered it out in a field. When they exit the bus, we see that they are standing right outside of that factory. Some people approach them, whom Fly and the other man seem to know. A lady asks what happened to the other one who was with them. They tell her that he has died. Fly takes Victor inside the factory. She tells him some more basic information about the world he found himself in. He then tells himself to wake up, but he cannot do it. Fly tells him to get his act together because someone died so he could be here, and that he will get used to the bizarre landscapes, which are dreams that someone is having. She then takes him to a room that will be his. In there, she tells him that the man in charge left the coma once. He came back to it to tell others about it, and to save them. She then says that they owe him their lives. When Fly leaves the room, Victor takes some food in his hands, and its incomplete areas start filling out. Taken aback by this, he puts it down. The scene changes to him sleeping. He has a dream of the city we saw in the beginning. He then walks into some building, and eventually, he gets in a car crash. Afterward, he wakes up. When he does, he sees a car lying upside down in his room. He walks close to it and sees himself in the backseat, just like in his dream. Then the other guy he was with at the start walks in. His name is Phantom. He tells Victor a few things, and then tells him to stay away from his girl. He says that Fly is his, even though it is not official. Victor states it that way to him, and Phantom gets at least slightly irritated. He says that Yan, the man in charge there, has made mistakes in the past, so he could be wrong about Victor. With that said, Phantom then informs him that he is in charge when they are out there in the battlefields, not Yan. So it is best that Victor listens to what he tells him. But in response to that, Victor says that Fly decides what she wants. Phantom, now even more irritated, tells him that everyone is waiting for him downstairs, and that they should go there. Once outside, Phantom starts telling him that they all have some special ability, but this ability comes out only in fearful situations. 
Some other personnel there then fires a non-lethal round at Phantom, and Phantom catches it to demonstrate what he means. He then fires at Victor, but he only gets hit with it. His special ability was not revealed, so he fires at him again, and it only knocks him to the ground. Phantom then says that some people's abilities come out in real combat, but he also says that they are not animals, and so they cannot throw him into a war zone unprepared like that. Phantom asks to bring out the training machine. When it comes out, we see a rather large stationary robot that could be controlled with a remote control. Phantom controls it and directs it to Victor. The machine brings down its metallic arm at Victor, who just lies there defensively and takes the hits. Phantom tells him to fight. Victor does not, and it keeps hitting him. When Phantom stops the beating, he asks Victor if he is capable of doing anything. He then asks him what his job was before this place, and Victor says he was an architect. In the next scene, Victor is asleep again. We see more images coming to him. More details are then added to the ones we saw before, but the car crash comes again. He wakes up and sees that the car is still lying there upside down. When he is outside again, Phantom and the rest of his crew walk by and are ready to venture out of their haven. Phantom slightly humiliates Victor as he tells him to stay there while putting his hand on Victor's head. A man next to him tells him that he is lucky because he does not have to risk his life fighting outside. He could stay here until he wakes from his coma and returns to his life. At that point, Yan appears from above and drops a few secrets in Victor's direction. He tells him that time flows differently here, that the time ratio for this place to the real world is about 100 to 1. He then tells him that he thinks they are all there for a reason. They might be those that did not make it in the real world. Victor tells him that he cannot remember who he is, he just has fragments of memories. Yan responds by saying that that might be better that way. After their conversation, Victor decides he wants to venture out with Phantom and his crew. He then comes to Phantom and tells him such. But Phantom responds by saying it's not for him. Yan interjects and says that he will come. Phantom slightly argues, but it is decided. In the next scene, we see them walking outside the factory. While they walk, they explain to Victor some more as to how this dream reality probably works. They then see one of those dangerous creatures from earlier. They call them Reapers, and they say that they cannot get to them because from where they see them, it is a two-day journey to get there. Victor asks what are they, and one of them, Astronomer, tells him that they are coma patients whose brains are dead, but the life support is still on. After that, Phantom tells them what they will do, and they follow him on the mission. Once they get to a certain area, a guard sees Phantom and begins to shoot him. One of the crew members, Spirit, uses her ability to create a ghost version of him and then the real Phantom comes from behind that guard. Once he is there, Phantom twists his neck. Later, he throws a grenade at three guards. That alerts the rest of them. Many of them come out and open fire. We see Phantom fight many of them and handle them with little difficulty. A vehicle is then shown driving. The member known as Tank shoots at it, which causes a few guards to come out and shoot back. After that, Phantom comes to them and kills them, and then he pushes the car off the road. Once the battle is over, Astronomer angrily approaches Phantom and tells him that due to him the Reapers might get them. Phantom gets angry and grabs him for that. He tells him that he is in charge here, and he says what they do or don't do. They continue walking, and then stumble upon a submarine. One of them says how the torpedoes there have explosives that could last them for a month. And the next scene we see how the crew is working on taking them out. While they do it, Fly comes to Phantom and says she could aid his wound. He says he does not need any help and moves her away. One of them then sees a Russian flag, but due to the coma, he can't remember what country it belongs to. In a short while, they see perhaps three Reapers coming their way from afar. Phantom orders that most come with him while one person holds the chain that holds the torpedo, but it soon shows to be too difficult of a task. They come back to help him, and Victor tries to concentrate so he could use his ability. Phantom orders them to return, but they do not. Under such a stressful situation, Victor is able to pull through with his ability and create some sort of ghostly support that the torpedo could safely land on and be brought to them. While that happens, Phantom shoots the chain that holds the torpedo, and unbeknownst to him, it falls on that ghostly support and slides down to them. We see Phantom being shocked by this occurrence, and then he tells them to collect it and leave. Later, the Reapers arrive at that location, but Phantom and his crew have already left. We see them at their base. They sit and celebrate, and they discover that Victor can use his ability to build walls and bridges. Yen then tells them that he promised to take them to an island, but that maybe Victor could instead build one for them. He asks him if he can, and Victor thinks it over, and eventually says that he could. After that, Yen says that Astronomer will lead the next time they go out. Phantom attracted the Reapers this time, and so Yen believes that he should sit out on the next one. With that, Phantom gets upset and leaves the celebration. The next scene has everyone sleeping, but Victor is awake. While they sleep, he tries to use his powers to create something. He tries a few times, but it does not seem to work. Fly comes out and sees him trying. She sees that it isn't working, which makes her ask him why he said he will build that island. She then tells him that back at the mission a blueprint appeared before the ramp. That is how he was able to make it. Victor then concentrates again to see the blueprint. When he does, he follows it carefully to create a small building. 
Fly comes to it and touches it. She then asks to see the memories in his room. He takes her there and shows her. They speak about the reality that they find themselves to be stuck in. They tell each other that here they could be with the ones they want to be with. And then they start kissing. A decent distance outside their room stands Phantom, facing the room. We know that he was eavesdropping because of his apparent irritation. While preparing to leave, Tank says that there will be no Reapers on their route. We then see Phantom approach a pouch of dynamites and sneak one of them away for himself. They then all exit the bus and walk. Fly and Victor hold hands. The scene then changes for a short while to show some Reapers and how they sense something. It is likely that they sense the crew. While we see the crew walk, Victor asks Yan what he should make on the island. Yan answers that he is the architect and therefore he should decide. And Spirit tells them that she senses Reapers. This troubles them, so they discuss how they will handle this unfortunate situation. They come to the conclusion that they will split up. Victor walks with his gun pointing in front of him. He then sees an airplane floating. A Reaper then comes his way, but before he strikes, he gets shot. Tank saves him, and says that Yan sent him. After that, they come to warn the others of the Reapers. Phantom then appears and runs to Victor so he could plant the dynamite on him. Fly points her gun at him and Astronomer asks where he got it. While that happens, they all see his decaying hand. This prompts Yan to shoot him. A black substance comes out when he does. And then Phantom runs away. They then see the crew member Cable get killed by a Reaper. They keep killing others. Meanwhile, Phantom is shown alone somewhere, and his face has black decaying lines covering it on the left side. He then activates his dynamite when close to a reaper and calls it to come to him. But it does not come. Victor and several others then run from the reapers. And then, suddenly, Victor starts feeling weird. His consciousness starts leaving the scene. It fades and fades, and then he wakes up in a hospital bed, freed from the coma. But he does not awaken completely. In the stages leading to a fully wakened state, more events from the past come to him. He is riding in the car again, and a female is there with him. It turns out to be Fly. When they stop near some building, a man who calls himself an assistant comes to them. He tells Victor that only he is allowed to come in. Victor enters the building, which is the building we saw in his dreams. We see him speaking to the man in charge, who is then revealed to be Yan. They both walk towards a door that requires a code to get in. While doing so, Victor asks Yan what exactly they do there. And when they get in the room, Yan tells him that it is a place that taps into the coma state of an individual to create a reality better than this one. Personnel then try to take Victor by force, but he resists and offers a force of his own. He runs out of the building and fly backs the car into the entrance, allowing Victor to get into the back seat. She argues with him while driving, which then causes her to get into an accident. That is when he awakens completely. He turns his head to his right and sees Fly lying there in a coma state. He sits to face her, and then from behind, he hears Yan say that she was brought in just a few hours before him. But months passed for her in the coma world. Victor asks who they are, and Yan says that they are scientists that want to advance the world. He further says that he chose him so he could realize his architectural vision there. Victor asks him why, and Yan answers so they could live there. They then walk to the bed where Phantom lies. Yan tells Victor that Phantom remembered who he was eventually. Then he shows him that his lower legs are missing. And after that, he says that Phantom did not want to return to the real world. Yan then adds that what he does is give people what they want. But Victor continues to rebel and says that he will not go back there. That pushes Yan to threaten him by bringing possible harm to Fly. He tells him that he wants him to build an island and a city in the coma reality. Only then will he let him go free. Yan gives his word, and Victor goes back to bed. The next scene has him waking up in the same room as at the start of the film. He looks around in his room and picks up that picture again. This time he sees himself with Fly in it. He looks out the window and plans for something. The scene changes to show the main crew of this coma world. Several of them sit there while having just shot a reaper. As they sit, a bridge shoots out from nothing as if to greet them. On that bridge walks Victor, who then tells them they have to leave with him. He brings them to the place that Yan wanted him to go to. While there, he tells them the truth about what is going on, how Yan is keeping them there in a deliberate coma state. And while he says that, Yan appears. He tells him to start using his powers and build his dream city. Victor starts building. He builds in seconds what would otherwise take months. A magnificent city materializes, which makes Yan so satisfied that he even quotes a creation passage from the Bible. When the city is created, Victor tells Yan to let them go. But instead, Yan starts telling every member of the crew there what their lives were like, outside in the real world. They were horrible lives not worth going back to. Then he tells Victor that the world could not handle his visions, and that Fly was not as glued to him as he thought. She even tells him there in a flashback that there is no us. After hearing that, most of them agree to stay. But Yan tells them that he cannot risk them leaving this place and telling someone out there about it. So he starts terminating his crew from outside the coma reality. He says that they have about 15 minutes before they all die. Victor tries to stop him, but Yan uses a power kind of like telekinesis to bring him down. Then he leaves them all there and starts entering his mega city by walking along the long white bridge. Victor, Fly, and Astronomer run away with a plan to survive. 
but spirit stays there and disintegrates into nothing. Yan sees them running, and we see that he stops walking into his city and instead starts walking back. When the three of them get to the bus that takes them to their factory home, they see reapers in the factory. They hesitate to go there, but then they enter. Once there, they activate the robot from the beginning that Victor tried training with. It goes up against a reaper and beats it. Then they enter Victor's room. They walk into the building that his dream brought into existence. And it is the hospital that is supposed to hold them all. But when they walk inside, it is not quite the same. It is mixed with other dream images. One room reveals a train station, another reveals a room fused with a beach, another door takes them to the outside when there should have been stairs. They feel lost, and this brings them back to the entrance. As they look for something memorable that would allow them to find the right room, Astronomer disintegrates. And to make matters worse, Yan appears. He starts speaking with them about the situation, and eventually, he grabs Victor and gets ready to kill him. While holding him, Yan says that life in a coma is as real as it gets. And then Yan gets killed from behind. We see that it is a Reaper that killed him. And that Reaper is very likely Phantom. They then walk out of that area and see that something else begins to appear in its place. It is a wall of ancient Egyptian architecture. When it materializes, Fly begins to disintegrate. And then so does Victor. Once he is gone, he wakes up in that bed. He is not dead, and instead pulls a long tube out of his mouth. He comes to Fly and does the same thing to her. At first, she does not wake up, but after some seconds she does. He sits there with her and comforts her. While he does, Yan's assistant comes in with several doctors. They just stand there and look at them, and do not try to stop them. Victor and Fly then get up and start leaving the area. The doctors go to Yan. In the following scene, we see Victor designing a building on his computer. Fly is there with him. They are at their home in the real world. On their television, someone speaks about the scandal for eternal life, and how the charges against it have been dropped due to a lack of evidence of it being a fraud. It is stated that all subjects were there legally. Fly then asks him if that organization would ever come for them. Victor answers that it isn't very likely. She then leaves, and asks from another room if he got any good mail today. He looks at it, and we see the icon there of that very organization. He then lies to her and says that the mail he got is nothing. We then see his face as he thinks of something. He is considering it. He cannot make up his mind if he should go there or not. Then he puts that mail in his drawer and locks it with a key. 